Hi there, it's Maggie from Knitting in the Park. So it's been a hot minute. Yeah. Well, yeah, longer than a hot minute, I know. Since we published a video, but uh, we've had quite a journey and we've been a little busy. We're t currently 21 weeks pregnant and we just found out that we're expecting a baby boy. So we'll have, I'm sure, lots of baby patterns as you guys have requested uh, coming to the vlog soon. But I wanted to share a different update or my focus right now uh, with you, which is Christmas. So I'm a Catholic, I celebrate Christmas. Um, I know there's a lot of other people that, that have different faiths and different holiday traditions out there. So um, whatever you celebrate, please just kind of keep that in mind as we go through this video. But I was scrolling through my newsfeed this morning, getting my coffee in, was nice and relaxed and a meme just hit me square in the face. We are nine weeks away from Christmas. And if you knit or crochet or craft uh, in one kind of another, you know that nine weeks is not a lot of time. It's kind of panic inducing. So I, I had my little conniption, my little fit, and then I was like, okay, Mags, let's, let's get your game plan. It's time to go back to your tips. So I'm going to share with you five tips on nice Murph, uh, five tips on how to get all the knitting that you need to get done between now and Christmas. So my first, uh, tip is one that I personally caught myself doing. And when we need to give a gift, we want to give the best, most, the coolest, uh, sometimes most intricate gift that we can give. And sometimes that's not always the best uh, option for us. So my first tip is to look through the current pattern libraries that you already have. So if you're really into knitting, there's chances that you have a Ravelry library, you've got some saved patterns there. You might have some uh, patterns favorited on loveknitting.com. You probably have a Pinterest account with a lot of awesome patterns there. Instead of going back to the drawing board and using these sites or others to find new patterns, go back through the ones that you've already found and fallen in love with. This will help save countless hours, trust me, you know what I mean when you can rabbit hole when you're searching for the perfect pattern for the perfect gift. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is of those patterns, identify the quick wins. Now we've got a couple gifts to make between now and the holidays. So while shawls and sweaters and really cool big projects make a really big impact, so do the smaller ones. Unfortunately, most of the people in our lives, unless they're very close to us and very in tune with our skills, don't know how much time goes into a knitting project. So whether it's a hat or a hat and mitten gift set, uh, a quick scarf or, or a chunky knit cowl, those are going to have a big impact with your intended recipients, just as much as a sweater would, unfortunately. <laughs> While we wish everybody knew exactly how much time went into a project, there's still few people that know it. So look for those items that you can knit up quickly, maybe in one to two days, maybe a couple that you can bang out in one day and set those aside because we're gearing up for my third tip. So we have to go through the patterns that you've already found. We've got our quick wins identified of those. Now we need to make a list for all of the people for whom we're going to knit this year. Now, when I say list, we're gonna be organized with this, right? We've already got our one, two, steps one and two done. Now, step three, we're gonna sort that into a one, two, three, or an ABC as well. So when I make my list, I jot down all the people who are close to me or whom I need a gift first. These are my must haves, right? So if you know you're entered into a grab bag at work or with your family, or you know that your family does a one-to-one -one gift exchange, those are the people that you're going to write down at the top, right? These are your must haves. If all else fails, these are the gifts that you need to have. Next, I do my nice to haves. So these are people that are still in my life and pretty close to me, but that I might not necessarily have to give a gift for. Like these are the people that I'm not expecting a gift from or that um, we might do something little or we might meet for coffee or something over the holidays. Just nice little gifts that 
are nice to have, but you don't need to have them. So if you don't get to one of these gifts, you're not heartbroken or your Christmas isn't ruined. The third category, if you're an overachiever and you're able to get all of these done, are your extras. Now extras are pretty much exactly what they sound like. These are your really fun but little gifts that are just nice to have. So they're they're your hostess gifts. These are um, the parties that you've been invited to or the people who you know you're going to bump into at some point during the holiday season and it's nice to just have something little to cheer them up. So while the other two might get more of the hats, the mittens, the cowls, uh, these are more the, the bottle sweaters, the or Christmas ornament sweaters, the velvet knit scrunchies, uh, those quick, fun little projects that make great hostess gifts or just kind of spur of the moment, hey, I was thinking about you, kind of a gift. Uh, so once you get this together, then you can kind of go back a step, right? You've got your list of whom you need to give gifts to. Now you can go back to the, the gifts that you want to make and figure out and match up who's going to get what. Right? So sometimes, some years I fall in love with a pattern and I just knit it for everybody in different colors. Or uh, there might be three different patterns that I find in love with and I knit in you know some kind of uh, way for different people. Or you might have a totally different pattern for everybody on your list. But at least now you can do a one-to-one, -one, get a game plan, and know exactly what you need to do. You can get a feel for how much time each project is going to take. And then you can start to map out, okay, this is what I'm gonna knit first, or these are the, the ones that are gonna take a little bit longer, so maybe I'll knit these first because I know I can bang these other ones out pretty quickly. So that's steps one through three. Now, step four is one of just my little quirks that I like to do. Skip the gift wrapping, right? You don't need an extra shopping trip this year to go and buy all those gift bags, um, all the boxes, the wrapping paper you have just created a beautiful handmade gift. Let the gift speak for itself. One of my favorite things to do is take something that I've knit, fold it up nicely or roll it up, depending on its shape, and then just wrap a piece of ribbon around it and tie it in a simple bow. It goes over so well every time and I've really, I keep a stockpile of ribbon so it's not something I'm splurging on last minute or um, have to remember to run out the day after Christmas next year to save money on these things. So skip the gift wrapping, don't even worry about it. Just wrap, like, um, like I said, fold or roll up whatever you've made very nice and neatly. You know, don't just throw it at them, but wrap, then you're going to take a nice long section of ribbon, wrap it around and just tie it in a simple bow. It doesn't have to be an ornate bow. Don't spend hours on Pinterest learning how to tie new bows just something nice and neat and simple, and it will just speak volumes. Lastly, and this is a no-brainer, use your time wisely. So let's say you're a mom and you've got kids. If you are waiting to pick up a carpool, waiting to drop off, uh, if you're at a dentist appointment in the waiting room, get yourself a nice little knitting bag and get, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. It could be just a Ziploc bag, something that makes your work transportable and get in a couple rows here and there whenever you can. It might not seem like one or two rows is a lot, but as you start to work, it adds up. So I know mommy's knitting all the time because of this, it's so hard. But try to sneak in as much as you can in those quiet moments that are those in-between moments where we tend to like lose time sometimes. A couple rows here and there and pretty soon you're gonna have a hat done or whatever it is you're working on. So those little bits add up. I work from home and I actually use this tip quite a bit throughout the year because that quick spark, that quick couple rows, it relaxes me and it allows my, subcon my, my subconscious to kind of take a minute and just recharge. It turns my brain off for just a few minutes that I can go back and write another blog post or do whatever I need to do for work. I'm not telling you to bring your knitting to work and knit all the time because you might get in trouble. But if you can sneak a few rows on your lunch break or here and there, um, it's gonna really help limit the amount of stress and time it takes when you're home in the evenings and supposed to be engaging with your loved ones. So those are my five tips. 
look through your pattern libraries, identify your quick wins, make your list, and then again, map it to those, uh, those quick wins. Skip on the gift wrapping and use your time wisely and you will be able to get, I'm pretty sure, almost all of your gifts done between now and Christmas. So you've got nine weeks, now you've got a roadmap, have fun.